you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, it comes from John Rogers. That's right, John Rogers, the representative here in the state of Alabama from Birmingham, who has a habit of saying things that, well, frankly, just don't make a whole lot of sense. And uh, he reminds me very much of Joe Biden with the way that he'll just throw out a gaffe and not even realize it and then double down on the gaffe. So this is one such instance. So to understand the context in which this story takes place, you do need to understand exactly what has been going on in the past couple of weeks or the past couple of months in the state of Alabama um, just, uh, about two months ago, we had a bill pre-filed called the Girl Act, and we've talked about it on this program multiple times, both with Becky Gerritsen and, and also with, uh, various other segments. And what the Girl Act does is it would prohibit anybody from applying to and playing in a public school sport that is for one gender if they do not belong to that gender. And there are some things that the bill had to be amended on and reworded, but basically what happened is, initially, they said it has to be the gender on your birth certificate, and as I pointed out then, and people uh, at the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives have pointed out since then, well, that's a problem because what's on the birth certificate doesn't always match their biological sex, and so they've made some adjustments, and it is a better act now, at least that's what we've heard from Becky Gerritsen with our weekly updates, and I intend to ask her about this this upcoming week as well on Thursday. But what happened here with the Girl Act is that you had Representative John Rogers, a Democrat who he understood that all of his Democrats uh, in, in his caucus, the ones that are allies with him, were against the Girl Act, but it's like he didn't get the talking points memo because he has kind of fumbled around to explain why he doesn't think it's a good idea, and when asked to explain his lack of support, he said, well, some of my favorite athletes are transgender. He said, especially this one, and I can't remember his name, but he's a football player, and there's like 20 football players that are transgender, you may recall that we were talking about this, and it turns out when they ask him afterwards, like, who were you talking about? There are no transgender football players in the NFL. And he was like, oh, I was talking about Cam Newton. <laughs> Which, granted, sometimes Cam wears ladies' clothes. And it's really odd, and I don't know why he does it. He has, like, the, the big floppy church lady hats, like he's about to do a key and pill routine, and I love Cam Newton. I'm a huge Cam Newton fan. The only reason I ever watch even part of an NFL game is because the Panthers are playing, and I want to see Cam Newton because he was there and won the national championship when I was at Auburn. So I'm not hating on Cam Newton. I'm just saying that the clothes are a little outrageous. <laughs> and uh, John Rogers apparently thought that Cam Newton was an actual transvestite <laughs> because... Of all this going on. Uh, so that's the the lead up to the story. That's not the story. That's the lead up to the story that we have for you today. Because in response to this, John Rogers gave a follow-up interview to a website called Pluralist. And I just have some of the choice quotes from this interview that he said. So Rogers said, and I quote, a lot of people in the NFL have accused Cam Newton and other players of being transgender. No. Literally nobody has ever done that. Not in a serious way. Now, I'm not saying that John Longshore on our sister station, Sports Radio 740, or even Russell Terrier, or maybe another big Alabama fan has kind of, in a tongue-in-cheek way, not said, Oh yeah, Cam, I think he's a tranny. That's probably happened. But it's a joke. They're not seriously suggesting that Cam Newton is actually a trans person that thinks he is a woman trapped in a man's body. That is simply not true. And if that were true, he would be doing a really bad job of it because, yeah, he wears some really weird stuff, don't get me wrong, and sometimes it even looks like woman's clothing, but he's not like actually trying to pretend as though he is a woman or claiming that he's a woman. That's a completely different ball of wax. 
And now part of this may also be because in the last interview, you may recall that we were talking about, he seemed very confused about what trans was and what gay was. Because he, he kind of confused the two, and I don't know of anybody seriously accusing Cam or other football players of being gay. I don't know if they are or not. Frankly, I don't keep up with NFL enough to even know that. But it seems as though John Rogers kind of takes the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez approach to commenting on things in public where he just kind of spits things out there and hopes that they're true. But uh, continuing on in this interview, Rogers says, I brought him up because there are a lot of insinuations about a lot of people who play athletics, whether they are transgender or not, and you never know. Why would you point at someone if you don't know and no test has been done? Again, this one's really odd. But what's important about this is it seems as though what he's saying is, and this will make more sense if you couple it with, with the next quote, it's almost though talking about, but there's been no test done. He almost seems to suggest that what we ought to be doing is taking a genetic sample. And by the way, I'm not saying that they'd have to like, you know, take blood or anything. You could take a, a genetic sample and determine whether or not someone is male or female just by swabbing the inside of their mouth and taking their spit. It really is that simple. And the reason that it is that simple is despite what the woke brigade and despite what the liberals will tell you, literally every single cell in your body is screaming that you are either a male or a female. It is that way from the time of conception, from the time you are conceived in the womb, which, you know, Democrats happen to be pretty anti-science about what happens in the womb as well. But that happens from the time of conception to the time that you die, and as long as your DNA and your genetic code is preserved, you will always have either an XX chromosome or an XY chromosome. So you've got one X chromosome if you're a guy, you got two of them if you're a girl. If you're a guy, you have a Y. If you're a girl, you don't. This is not that complicated. They literally teach this stuff to second and third graders in biology, and yet the Democrat Party has all of a sudden decided... Nah, let's just ignore that. That's, that's not really a thing. But it says right here, this is biology. We've known this for generations. Ah, don't, don't bother me with the science. I, I'm, I'm going off of what I'm feeling. And so I think because this is a very new age thing, this is where some of the confusion sets in with John Rogers, and we'll see that in this next quote. When you're born, some people are born a hermaphrodite. Remember, this is John Rogers speaking. I'm not... So, you know, YouTube, don't ban me for this. I am quoting John Rogers in this story. When you are born, some people are born a, a hermaphrodite. They're born as a boy, but they have other chromosomes of a girl. Or they're born as a girl, but have another chromosome of a boy. Sometimes the gender doesn't take effect until later in life. That's science. It's X and Y chromosomes. Okay, so... Now John Rogers is showing that he doesn't know what we're talking about here. Because the whole debate was about trans athletes, not intersex athletes. A trans athlete is somebody that is normal, has no uh, abnormalities in their genetics whatsoever. They are either born an X chromosome, uh, XX chromosome or X chromosome with a Y chromosome, in other words, male. And then they decide, no, nah, I don't feel like a male. I don't feel like a female. So I'm going to identify as the opposite of what I actually am. This is their system of logic. And they say, because they feel that way, they should be competing against other athletes. I don't have to explain this to you. I am doing so, I know, because the vast, overwhelming majority of people in my audience, they already get this. They're familiar with the terminology. John Rogers isn't. And so all the time, this is another thing that I think is really funny. People always assume that when it comes to things like the news or the issues, that the people that we send to Washington, our elected officials, they're just so much more informed than us. They have access to all this information. Guys, they're just regular people like us. Some of them are smart. Some of them are dumb, just like any other industry that you could find. You go out into a construction site, I guarantee you there's some really smart people there. There's some idiots there. You go into a restaurant, there's some smart people running that restaurant, there's some dumb people in that restaurant. <laughs> it's just the way society works, it's the way the human race works. Elected officials are no different. There's some people that are really on top of things, there are some people that probably have spent 
four, five, six years at college getting degrees in gender theory to teach them that all of the stuff we just talked about is not true, even though it is, and are incredibly well-informed on the fantasy land that men are not men and women are not women. But the point is they're well-informed on those things and can talk quite eloquently about it. John Rogers ain't one of them. I'm a conservative, and I've spent no more time than absolutely necessary studying gender theory, and I can tell you that he's nowhere even in the realm of being in line with the trans community. In fact, their heads would explode reading this, saying that, oh, it's just biology, X chromosomes and Y chromosomes, biology. Th their heads would blow up hearing John Rogers describe this. But intersex and hermaphroditic is not trans. A trans person is a completely different ball of wax, and he doesn't seem to understand that. But I will say this in John Rogers' defense. Because, yes, I'm picking at him, and it's funny because he, he doesn't know what he's talking about despite the fact that he's going to have to make decisions that affect the lives of potentially thousands upon thousands of high school athletes in the state of Alabama. This guy is the guy that's going to have to make that decision despite not knowing anything about what we're talking about here. And yet, it's not 100% his fault, and here's why I say that. Part of the reason he doesn't understand all of this is because it is irrational. This is a guy that has grown up and been taught something his whole life that, as though it was settled science, which it is, this is not some new creation. And then a whole bunch of people, several decades later, are coming back and saying, no, that's not the way it is. We're going to make up our own science. We're going to make up our own rationale for why we're allowed to do this or why you should allow us to compete in an event despite not sharing the same biological sex and the biological traits of the people in said event. And so John Rogers is just looking at this and going, oh, well, th this must be what they were talking about. It must be something that they were born with that they can't control, and it's just those evil, heartless, mean Republicans that don't want people to compete and are being uh, discriminated against. In fact, in this interview, he was suggesting that the reason he will vote against this bill is because it discriminates against hermaphroditic people, even though the bill doesn't even address that at any point at all. It wouldn't even, as an unintended consequence affect them. Not based on the reading of the bill that I've seen, at least. And so again, he's arguing a point that nobody on either side is arguing because he doesn't understand what, what is actually going on here. And that is because, to him, this is all gobbledygook. And he's trying to figure out a way to explain why his Democrat colleagues are so against what is a very common sense logical thing to him and, and most people. Most people that have not been indoctrinated to think otherwise, that men are not actually men and women are not actually women. And so because of this, in his brain, I think what's going on here is that John Rogers is trying to explain in his own mind, well, my Democrat colleagues must have a good reason for being against this thing. It's got to be discriminating against somebody. And so he's assuming that the Democrats have a good reason for defending this. They don't. And I think that really is why John Rogers feels the need to defend this is because he is a member of his tribe. And because he is a member of his tribe, and his tribe has already said, this is how we're going to stand on this, he doesn't know why they're standing that way, but he belongs to the tribe, and he has to do the bidding of the tribe. And so he's trying to wire work an explanation of why this bill is a bad idea and explain it to somebody else, and the results are just hilarious. And then finally, this is the last quote that we'll read from him. You need to get medical proof of what they really are, a boy or a girl. They need to have more X chromosomes than Y chromosomes. Which gender is prominent? Go with the test. Go with biology. If a person ends up being male, they can compete as a male. And if they end up being female, they can compete as a female. All right, the science is a little shaky early on in that because it's not whether you have more X chromosomes or not. It's just men have an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Females have two of them. So the science is not exactly spot on by John Rogers, but uh, at the end of that quote, I agree with him. I mean, look at what he said there. He said, if they end up being female, they can compete as a female. If they end up being a male, let them compete as a male. Yes, that's what the Republicans are saying. That's what this bill is trying to do. 
it's trying to say, if you're a guy, compete with the guys. If you're a girl, compete with the girls. It's hilarious that in his blatant attempt to try to make his position sound rational for why he opposes the bill, he makes the case for why the bill is a good idea. And he doesn't even realize it because he's so unfamiliar with the terminology and unfamiliar with the principles, the concepts that he's talking about that he actually makes a logical argument. He just does so in the favor of the opposite side of the one that he's on. And that's because common sense did surface. It just surfaced on the other side of what John Rogers was trying to argue for. Now, to be fair, John Rogers is getting on up there. He's a little bit senile. He doesn't have much of a filter on his mouth anymore. And Rogers' mind is a, a bag of cats. Like, it's going in a hundred different directions. There's no unity uh, following a train of thought of his is like trying to follow the anime One Piece. I, I know that this is going to be an analogy that falls flat for a lot of my viewers, but for those of you who don't know, One Piece is a uh, a cartoon series that was really popular, and it's like, I don't know, 300 episodes long. And it starts out, it makes a lot of sense. There's a small cast of characters. It's pretty easy to understand the mythology. And the longer it goes, the weirder it gets, the, the more convoluted the storyline gets. You don't understand who is where and who can do what and, and who these characters are. That's kind of what trying to follow a John Rogers thought process is like. It starts out and you kind of see where he's coming from and there's something going on there. And then all of a sudden it takes all these weird twists and turns and you have no idea where you are and there's tons of inaccuracies. Honestly, it's somewhat Trumpian. Now, Trump is a good bit more lucid than John Rogers, I'll give him that, and he, he tends to make more sense on a regular basis, but sometimes Trump is just kind of a stream-of-consciousness guy, and his thoughts just kind of wander, and he'll switch subjects on you, and all of a sudden he's talking about something that you didn't know why that was taking place, but this is the kind of guy that John Rogers is. He's a stream-of-consciousness guy, too, and sometimes that stream takes some weird twists and turns. But the thing is, this is true even when John Rogers is kind of right. And I think that the position that he's trying to come from, he's on the wrong side of the argument, but a lot of his rationale for why you should be against it is actually a pretty good reason of why you should be for this particular bill. And I think that this is a, a pretty good microcosm, a good little display of what's going on in the DNC right now. You see, right now there is a civil war going on between the uber-woke left and the normal Democrats that just kind of liked JFK and Lyndon Baines Johnson and want more taxes and a bigger welfare state, but they're not socialists. And they're not a part of this whole, we have to have intersectionality and, you know, drag queen story time left. They're not part of the rainbow jihad, as it were. This isn't a religion to them. And so because of that, you're seeing this real pull between these two, because there's certainly more of what we would call the establishment Democrats. There's a lot more of them, and they kind of kowtow to the intersectionality crowd because they think that they need them to win the election. But they're not as vocal and they're not as active, and the woke brigade sort of represents a very, very vocal, active minority that's trying to steer the ship, and largely they've been successful in doing that, it's just that John Rogers didn't get the game plan. He didn't get the talking points memo. And so because of it, he winds up making the case for the other side <laughs> as opposed to his own. He doesn't understand the difference between trans and gay and hermaphrodites, intersex, all of that other stuff. He doesn't get that. And that's because it takes years of indoctrination to even come somewhat close to being able to understand any of it. Because when you're trying to learn nonsense, you can't use your own logic to arrive at those conclusions, so you have to be taught unlogic to be able to arrive at those conclusions. And I do think it's just hilarious that if you were reading this interview and you're a, a woke person or somebody that's all about the trans movement, I mean, you're furious at John Rogers, and if you didn't have the label of Democrat on it, they would swear up and down this is some kind of evil, white, hate-filled Nazi when, of course, he's a African-American Democrat. And I do find that pretty hysterical as well. But ultimately, I think that what John Rogers ended with 
This is good advice. If they're a man, let them compete with men. If they're a woman, let them compete with women. Go with biology. That's what we've been arguing since the beginning of this debate. So oddly enough, I'm telling you, yes, John Rogers actually made sense for once. And I think that that's what we ought to go to. Biology ought to be the standard in this particular situation because ultimately that's what sports are. They are a measure of biology. They are a measure of what your body can do and what it can accomplish. And because of that, biology, not feelings, should be the standard. Now, if we were talking about art, okay, maybe go with feelings. Feelings are very important in art. Art is subjective. There's no such thing as a score in art. And so for that, yeah, feelings work. And I see no reason to separate out men's art and women's art if it's in a competition with one another. Because a man can be just as artistic as a, as a woman and vice versa. But ultimately, when it comes to biology, when it comes to sports, you have to go with biology. You have to go with an objective measure. You have to go with science because that's what sports are by their very nature. They're a measure of your biology. And forcing a woman who biologically, in a lot of ways, is, is incapable of doing a lot of the things that a male body can do against a male body is simply not fair. And there are a handful of sports where the reverse is true. We've all seen the Olympics. Would you really want a male gymnast, and, and they're in peak physical condition, doing a floor routine against a bunch of female gymnasts? That wouldn't make sense. They can't do all those flips. They can do flips, but they can't do the same ones that women can do because they have superior flexibility. And so it's not even a thing that men are superior and women are inferior. In certain sports, the reverse is true, and it's not fair to expect a male body to be able to do things that a female body can. Our bodies are different, and that's okay. And because they are different, we should acknowledge that in competition so that it's fair for everyone competing. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely. Thank you.